Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Little Ring Lamb. Today I have a book review on Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendar Blake. And this is the first book in a duology and I really enjoyed this book. I read it as part of a read along with the Reading Fangirls, which is a Goodreads group and I'll put the link in the down bar. And I absolutely loved it. I was very like wary of reading this in the first place, but it got a lot of buzz I think two years ago or a year ago on booktube. So I picked it up but I was very wary because I'm not a big supernatural paranormal reader. I typically stay away from those that particular genre. So I was really surprised how much I actually enjoyed this and I really want to read the sequel soon. Um, basically before we get into this I was requested to do for my reviews like just to try out a spoiler section from a, um, from a commenter but I'm not going to do that today just because my throat's still a little bit sore, it's still a little hard for me to talk today, I'm finally getting my voice back, so I don't want to push myself too much when I still have another thing to film for today, but I'm going to try that next time. Anyway, there will be no spoiler section for this one though, but I'll do it for my next review. Anyway, if you're new to my book reviews or just need a refresher, I write my books in five different categories. Plot, characters, cover, suspense, and overall in terms of reading again very soon, five to five, not so soon, one out of five. So basically, a brief synopsis of this without spoiling it would be, there's a boy named Cass, and basically he's a ghost hunter. He goes and kills the spirits, or the, the ghosts, so they can go to the afterworld. And he and his mother move around to go find these ghosts, and he goes to Thunder Bay to find Anna, dressed in blood is her name, and she's a very powerful ghost. And basically everybody that steps into her house, she automatically kills. And for some reason, she spares Cass's life, and that's really where the story picks up. What I found up. was really cool was that this book was San Thunder Bay, which is a province, which is a town in my province. I've never been there, but it was really cool because I know the place, so it was kind of cool because I've read, I've read very few books with even places in Canada, so I was very happy to hear that there was a Canadian place. Not that I could pick up on anything in this book because it was a ghost story, but I found that was really cool. Anyway, the plot, I give a four. Um, if you asked me a hundred, like two, like a hundred pages to the end, I would have said 3.5, but I gave it a four because it's a very good ending. I really enjoyed that. And it really, I knew it had to lead some way to the second book because it is a duology. And I really love the way it led in. Um, it was a little slow in certain parts, so I was going to give it a 3.5. I was actually going to give it a 3.75, but I thought that was quite excessive, so I just bumped it up to a four. But I really like the plot. I really liked how it progressed. It was a little slow. That's why I got a point off. And some of the action scenes were a little bit harder to follow along um, with. If you've seen any of my other reviews, I've done more act reviewed more like dystopian books. You know that it's hard for me to follow along sometimes with action scenes because I just can't visualize it that well in my head um, for some reason. But I really liked everything that happened. I loved how the plot progressed, and I can't wait to see what happens in the sequel. Characters, I also give a four out of five. I really like the characters. Um, there's some characters I really couldn't stand, and most of the characters. I couldn't stand what really a bother near the end, but um, especially Carmel, she really changed in a good way. I'm not going to say much more about characters because I don't want to spoil anything, but I really do love the characters of Anna, Cass, Carmel, Thomas, all of them, and even the cat. He was the cat they own. I forget his name. It starts with a T. Um, I'm just not going to look back and see what his name is, but I really enjoyed all like the, the characters. I thought they had good personalities. And though there wasn't very much character progression in this book, I really did enjoy how the characters mixed and mingled with each other. Cover, I give a 5 out of 5. At, this, the cover is one of the things, when I saw this on booktube going around, and it was really popular, it was in its prime time hype. Um, I saw this cover going around, and though I'm not a big paranormal reader or supernatural reader, I was really drawn in by the cover because it reminds me of almost like a graphic novel. Especially if you look at the back, it does remind me of graphic novel type... Um, Co not covers but like kind of the drawing style um, and it's just really intriguing because the cover though even though it's Anna dressed in blood you want to know like why this happened and it's very mysterious especially the picture and I like how it's in black and white and I also love how the font on the inside of the book is done in red that's just I just found that really cool that was one of the things I remember people were raving about Suspense, I'm going to give Suspense a 3.5 out of 5. The reason being is this book, though it was very good, I couldn't read it the last few week, last week because I was pretty sick and I had a lot of assignments, but I wasn't dying to pick it up. But at the same time, there's certain parts, like after, um, I think it was around page 200, yeah, page 206 and 7, after you finish the little part before that, you really want to go on to the next chapter. I forget what chapter that is, but that part. 
and I was dying to get to that part, but other parts I could go days without and be fine. Um, so it wasn't the most suspenseful read, but the last 150 pages or so I say were where the most suspense was. And a little bit in the beginning because you want to know what happened, but you're not satisfied with the answers in the beginning because obviously you need to keep going to get more answers. And overall I give this book a 3.5 to 5. Um, the reason being is because I won't read it too soon because it's still fresh in my mind, but I hope to read the sequel um, very soon. And it was a good book. It's definitely something I'd probably pull out next Halloween or something or one in the future. It was it was really good for that. And I really so did enjoy this book, so Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendra Blake. If you've read this book, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.